going to start a new drawing. Lay down a stage using the Spotlight Stage tool. Spotlight Stage. Make it 60 feet wide of the back wall. 30 feet deep. About 15 feet in to where my proscenium opening will be. I'll give it a bit of an apron, let's say a five foot apron. A 30 foot wide apron. Five feet back to proscenium. 15 feet out. And then we'll close it. Gives us our stage. We'll give it a texture. We'll make the top um, dark carpet and the sides. We'll make it brick. We need to put this, uh, it's going to be four feet tall, so if we look at it from an angle, it's sitting here, but if we look at it from the front, it's sitting four feet on top of our floor. So we want to subtract four feet, so it is, this will be our, oops, wrong direction, minus 48. So it's below, so it becomes our zero in uh, that axis. So there's our stage. Now we're going to place some flats upon the stage. I'm going to use the wall tool in the building. Apparently you can't change things whilst you're in the command menus. Wall tool, give myself some set pieces, just an interesting shape like so. I'm going to change my wall style to flats. Wall tool, change the style. I want to create a wall style for flats. So I'm going to go here and give myself a new style. Change the wall style simply to one inch. And I'm going to save this as a new wall style, one inch, so that's just going to be my soft covered flats. Soft covered Broadway flats. Actually, I'm going to move the word flats to the beginning because it's likely in the future I'll add more flats. And if I do it this way, it'll keep them alphabetically sorted. So there is my wall style. Change this to flats at the top. There we go. I'll put in a core control. So lay out a set, basic box set of no significance. Bring this so it's in line with this side. We'll snap to that, and that's our endpoint. So there are our walls. We can look at this from the front. Nice vector view. Excellent. There they are. Choose them and change their height. The walls are eight feet tall. I'm going to change these to 14 feet tall. There we go. Look it up from above and stick in a doorway. Put one into this wall. Make it open out. Put one into this wall. And we'll make that open in. Put in a window, an upstage wall, change the size of the window, so it's a bigger window, so it's five feet. Okay. So the type of window that's just okay, so I'm let's make it a window that opens like that. There we go, there's our set. Take a look at it from the front. There we go. So what we want to do is we want to move this collection of flats into a different layer because I haven't done that. I was in the theater floor plan layer and I want them to be in the scenery layer. So I'm going to change that from layer floor plan to layer scenery. And it's flipped back to ground plan view because I don't have my stack layers command checked. It's called unified view. So we do that unified view, now everything goes together. Change our current layer. There we are. So these flats, I want to keep track of which, what flats they are. So I'm going to give them all names. So I'm going to put a simple layer here. Call this A, call this one D, call this one C, D, and E. Now since I've written these layers in layer plane up here, we're in layer plane, we could have been in screen plane, but we're in layer plane. Um, when I look at these views from different angles, the letters are going to stay on the floor, which is rather handy. The labels will just go there with that. Now let's see what happens when we look at it from the side. This presents us with a bit of a problem, because when we have a side view like so, we're not sure which walls and where. Oops. 
down a little bit. Come back up. See here we wouldn't be able to see through the wall, so that would be a, a bit of a challenge for us when we're doing our models. So we want to be able to turn on and off each wall. So we're going to take the walls and move them into their own classes. So over here on the right, in the class window, we're going to create some new classes by double-clicking there. And we're going to hit new, call this wall A, enter. Uh, leave all of the same. Now we're going to hit new again. If we hit control or command, N, there's a new one, wall B, yes, wall C, yes, wall D, yes. How many walls do I have? A, B, C, D, E. I'm going to another one. Wall E. There we go. Yes. Now I go over here. I'm going to go back into the drawing. Yes, I'll save it. Model. So I have my walls, A, B, C, D, and E. I'm going to choose everything for wall, wall A and move it into class wall A. Choose everything in wall B, not the C, there we go, and move it to wall B. Move this stuff to wall C. Move these items to wall D. And move these items to wall E. Let's zoom out and see how it fits on the paper. And so I'm about to print it on a few sheets of paper. I'm going to move everything as I move the paper over and change some of the paper information, change the paper location so that I don't waste a whole lot of paper. There we go. I'm going to go back into page setup and change this to horizontal 2 and vertical 1, which will give me these two sheets of paper, which now I can move back up here. There we go. Hit print. And now I'll have a copy of my ground plan. Next, I will need a front view of each wall. I'm going to take a look at the drawing in a different way. I'm going to use a different tool. In 3D modeling, I'm going to choose the working plane tool. And I'm going to start, actually I'm going to start with this wall, with wall A. I'm going to place the working plane on the front of this wall. And then click on view. And it lets me see a front view of that wall. It's in the middle of my paper. So I'm going to move the paper over because now I can do one sheet of paper at a time. I'm going to page set up, one, one, and there's my sheet of paper, move it so it's centered, terrific, print, and after it prints out I'm going to write down on the piece of paper that it is flat A, so I can keep track of which ones I'm printing. I got down on this, an A. While I'm in this view, I'm going to save the view as wall A, click on add, wall A, for future use. Okay. Let's go back to a down view. Now we can just go straight for a front view. That one's easy because this back wall is there. Move my paper up a little ways. Print. This one I'm going to call wall B. I don't need to save it because that's just a plain front view. Now I need to go to this one here. So I'm going to hit my tool, just select the working plane with the front of this flat, and now hit view it. Now here's an issue. This line right here, right there, is part of a wall A. So if I go to my classes and I turn off wall A, look what happens to that line. It goes away. Now it's showing me just this one. Well, right, let me just get rid of wall B since we don't need it anymore. Now I can see that. I'm going to move my paper, center it down to here. There we go. Hit print. And we'll write down on the paper that this is wall C. And this is wall C. Use the same tool again. Do it from the front. There it is. Wall D. And I can print it. I'm going to move it a little bit. Print. Yes. Turns out I will put a label on it. This wall over here. Look at it from the front. There's that wall. I'll save it as wall. And print. There we go. I now have copies of all the walls. I'm going to turn on these other two walls again. I'll get it from above. A, B, C, D, E. And there is printing out all the walls for model for making my model. 